Today I'm going to read from one of my favorite books. It's a book called I'm in Charge of Celebrations. It's written by Bird Baylor with pictures by Peter Parnell. And it's about a little girl who lives out in the desert all by herself. Sometimes people ask me, aren't you lonely out there with just the desert around you? I guess they mean the bear grass and the yuccas and the cactus and the rocks. And I guess they mean the deep ravines and the hawk nests and the cliffs and the coyote trails that wind across the hills. Lonely? I can't help but laughing when they ask me that. I always look at them surprised. And I say, how could I be lonely? I'm the one in charge of celebrations. And sometimes they don't believe me, but it's true, I am. I put myself in charge. I choose my own. Last year, I gave myself 108 celebrations besides the ones they closed schools for. I cannot get by with only a few. And friend, I will tell you how it works. I keep a notebook and I write the date and then I write about the celebration. I'm very choosy over what goes in that book. It has to be something I plan to remember for the rest of my life. And you can tell what's worth a celebration because your heart will pound. And you'll feel like you're standing on top of a mountain and you'll catch your breath like you're breathing some kind of new air. Otherwise, I just count it as an average day. I told you I was choosy. And friend, I wish you could have been here for Dust Devil Day. But since you weren't, I'll tell you how it got to be my first real celebration. And you can tell, call them whirlwinds if you want to. Me, I think Dust Devils has a better sound. Well, anyway, I always stop to watch them. Here, everyone does. You know how they come from far away, moving up from the flats, swirling and swaying and falling and turning and picking up sticks and sand and feathers and dry tumbleweeds. Well, last March 11th, we were all going somewhere. I was in the back of a pickup truck when the dust devils started to gather. You could see that they were giants. You'd swear they were calling their friends to come too, and they came dancing in time to their own windy music. And we all started counting, and we started looking for more. And they stopped that truck, and we turned round and around, watching them all, and all, there were seven. And at a time like that, something goes kind of crazy in you, and you have to run to meet them, yelling all the way. You have to whirl around like you were one of them, and you can't stop until you're falling down. And then all day you think how lucky you were to be there. Some of my best celebrations are sudden surprises like that. If you weren't outside at that exact moment, you'd miss them. I spend a lot of time outside myself looking around. Once I saw a triple rainbow that ended in a canyon where I'd been the day before. I was halfway up a hill standing in a drizzle of rain. It was almost dark, but I wouldn't go in because of the rainbows, of course. And there at the top of a hill, a jackrabbit was standing up on his hind legs perfectly still, looking straight at that same triple rainbow. And I may be the only person in the world who's seen a rabbit standing in a mist, quietly watching three rainbows. Well, that's worth a celebration any time. I wrote it down and I drew the hill and the rabbit and the rainbow in me. And now, August 9th is Rainbow Celebration Day. I have Green Cloud Day too. Ask anybody and they'll tell you clouds aren't green. But late one winter afternoon, I saw this huge green cloud. It was not bluish green or grayish green or something else. This cloud was green. Green is a jungle parrot. And the strange thing was that it began to take a parrot's shape. First the wings and then the head and the beak. High in the winter sky, that green bird flew and it didn't last for more than a minute. You know how fast a cloud can change but I still remember how it looked. So I celebrate green clouds on February 6th. And at times like that, you always think, what if I'd missed it? What if I'd been in the house? Or what if, what if I hadn't looked up when I did? You can see I'm very lucky about things like that. And I was lucky on Coyote Day because of out of all the time, it had to be one moment only that a certain coyote and I could meet, and we did. And friend, you should have been here too. 
I was following deer tracks, taking my time, bending down as I walked, kind of humming. I hum a lot when I'm alone. And I looked up in time to see a young coyote trotting through the brush. She crossed in front of me. It was a windy day and she was going east in that easy, silent way coyotes move. She pushed into the wind. I stood there hardly breathing, wishing I could move that way. And I was surprised to see her stop and turn and look at me. She seemed to think that I was just another creature following another rocky trail. <laughs> That's true, of course I am. And she didn't hurry and she wasn't afraid and I saw her eyes and she saw mine. And that look held us together. Because of that, I will never feel quite the same way again. So on September 28th, I celebrate Coyote Day. And here's what I do. I walk the trail I walked that day and I hum softly as I go. And then finally, I unwrap the feast that I brought for her. Last time it was three apples and some pumpkin seeds and an ear of corn and some big soft homemade ginger cookies. And the next day I happened to pass that way again and coyote tracks went all around the rock where the food had been. And the food was gone. Next year, I'll make it even better and I'll bring an extra feast and I'll eat there too. And one of my greatest of all celebrations is called the time of the falling stars and it lasts almost a week in the middle of August. And I wait all year for those hot summer nights when the sky goes wild. You can call them meteor showers if you want to. Me, I like to say they're falling stars. And all that week I sleep outside. I give my full attention to the sky. And every time a streak of light goes shooting through the darkness, I feel my heart shoot out of me. And one night I saw a fireball that left a long, red, blazing trail across the sky. And after it was gone, I stood there looking up, not quite believing what I'd seen. And the strange thing was, I met a man who told me he had seen it too while lying by a campfire 500 miles away. He said he did not sleep again that night. And it suddenly it seemed that we two spoke a language no one else could understand. And every August of my life, I will think about that. And friend, I've saved my New Year's celebration until last. Mine is a little different from the one most people have. It comes in spring. And to tell the truth, I never did feel like the New Year started January 1st. To me, that's just another winter day. I let my year begin when winter ends and morning light comes earlier the way that it should. That's when I feel like starting new. And I wait until the white-winged doves are back from Mexico and wildflowers cover the hills and my favorite cactus blooms. It always makes me think that I ought to bloom myself. And that's when I start to plan my New Year's celebration. I finally choose a day that is exactly right. Even the air has to be perfect, and the dirt has to feel good and warm on bare feet. Usually it's a Saturday around the end of April. I have a drum that I beat to signal the day, and then I go wandering off, following all of my favorite trails to all the places I like, and I check how everything is doing, and I spend the day admiring things. If the desert tortoise I know from last year is out strolling around, I'll go in his direction for a while. And I celebrate with horned toads and ravens and lizards and quail. And friend, it is not a bad party. And walking back home, kind of humming. Sometimes I think about these people who ask me if I'm lonely here. And I have to laugh out loud. 